Hello. What we have here is a Sony PS3700 turntable. It was made in the mid 70s, I believe. It's in pretty rough shape, and you can see it's got some cosmetic damage as well down here. Uh, the vinyl's coming off, and the same on the side. But I want to have a go at it, see if we can get it up and running again. So I bought it as completely non working for very little money. I thought it would be a fun little project. I'll take the cover off and then we can have a closer look. So you can see here it says it's a direct drive turntable. That means it's going to be like one motor under here. There's not going to be any belts. So I mean that's a good thing. So as long as the motor is okay, then we should be able to get somewhere with this. And it appears to be turning just fine. Uh, it's quite peculiar mat they have on here but uh, I think Sony used that quite a lot back in the 70s and we got some pitch controls over here for 45 and 33 and a third and it's a semi-automatic it's not fully automatic it will it will automatically lift the tone arm once it's finished playing the record and return it back here or you can use the reject button at any point and then it will return the tone arm. So the tone arm seems to be complete. We got the weight. We got our cueing here. And of course it's missing the head shell and a cartridge. Uh, but it seems to be there. Everything is there. It's got anti-skating adjustment over here. And the stand here with the lock. That all seems to be okay. And over here we have our speed controls. So we have fine adjustment for the speed control. And well, there seems to be something missing over here. I think that's supposed to be like a switch here or something. I will have to look into that. And then we have, there's gonna be like a neon bulb in here. And based on the line frequency, uh, you can read these and see if the speed is set correct. So we can have a look at that, see if that's working. And let's just have a quick look under the turntable. Yeah, so we can see the circuit board over there. It looks fairly typical 70s technology. It's just transistors and capacitors and resistors. The good thing about that is if anything goes wrong, it's easy to find replacement transistors. There's not going to be some special IC that was only used for a couple of years by a specific brand. However, it looks like that there's a plate missing from the bottom here. I was pretty sure this is supposed to be covered up, but probably someone had it open and then never put the, put the cover back. Uh, just put the feet on here. You can see there's more damage over here. And here we have the main direct drive motor. Hopefully that's okay. And then we have the whole auto return mechanism over here. Hopefully that's okay. And another thing I noticed, well, there are no phone or output cables. Uh, you can see this is one of the wires is hanging off here. So we need to solder something on here so we can test it if it spins up. It's time to power it up and see what happens. Let's see if I can get this cable unwound. Uh, it's a little bit stiff, but it looks like it's the original cable. So I have it connected to my isolation transformer and a dim bulb current limiter. So let's see if it will run. Yeah, yeah, it starts spinning. Well, that's a good sign. So at least that appears the motor is working correctly. I'm not sure about the speed. Seems to be running a bit too fast. I don't know if it's in 45 or 33, uh, something. Seems like we can adjust the speed here. And you can see the neon bulb is working as well. So that's actually not looking too bad. So I think there's like a lever missing here to set the set the speed. Don't know if it's just broken off or something. No, I don't feel anything inside there. I probably have to take this apart and have a look. Ah, but I'm pretty happy the plate is spinning. 
So I have a head shell with a cartridge here. I'm just gonna put that on just to prevent the tone arm from flapping around so we can get some decent balance. There we go. Just roughly adjust the weight here. Okay, that's good enough for testing. So I just want to see if the return mechanism is working. So it should return once we get in here. No, it's not doing anything. What about the reject? No, nothing happens. Okay, need to have a look at that as well. But at least the motor is spinning, and that's definitely a good thing. I think the rest of it we can probably repair. I'll take the plat off so we can put it upside down and maybe get some idea why the auto return is not working. So let's get the rubber mat off here. I'll say it feels quite nice, especially for a 45 year old rubber mat. Uh, it actually feels very good. It's dirty, but a little bit of clean, and I think it'll be very good. And then to get the platter off. Okay, it's been sitting for 10 15 minutes. See if we can get it off. Yes, success. Ah, so it's, it's a decent platter. It's reasonably heavy. Uh, but it does have, you see, we have this little head down here, and then we have this magnetic coating here. So that means we have to be really careful with this platter because if it gets near any strong magnetism, it might erase the signal that's recorded onto the platter here for speed control or for feedback for the speed. So I'll just put it somewhere safe. So I think with the platter off, we can actually try to manually engage the auto return mechanism. Let me just try that here, see if it actually works. It's possible it's seized under with some really old grease, so maybe this feels really difficult. No. That seemed to work fine. Well, I don't I don't see a gear here, so I assume that's gonna be on the platter. Let me just have a look at that again. No, there's no gear here either. So, well, that would explain why it's not working. Uh, if this never engages here, then, well, it's never going to work. Well, that's a bit of a shame. I don't even, I would have expected the broken gear to be inside. So I can understand that if it's a plastic gear that it would split at some point and it will just stop working. But I guess the previous owner maybe just took the split gear out and continued to use it as a manual turntable i mean it's okay to do that you can use it as a manual turntable but it's kind of a shame not to get it fully working so i'm not sure if it's possible to find a new gear like that i'll have to look i don't even know what it looked like so let me just have a look on the internet see if i can find some pictures so i had a look online and i did manage to find one picture here uh, you can kind of see the gear. Uh, this is from a PS3300, uh, but it looks like it's the same mechanism. But it's a fairly low resolution picture, so it's hard to get in much details out of it. Uh, I tried to look for the service manual as well, so I didn't find the service manual for the PS3700, but I did find one for the 3300. However, uh, in the detail view, of the mechanism there's no close-up picture of this gear but i think i'll give it a try and see if i can make a new gear so based on the picture and a couple of measurements i went ahead and started designing a 3d model of the gear and then i prepared it for 3d printing and after printing it out this is what i ended up with 
So I hope you can see it on the camera. So we have our little gear down here, and then we have a couple of cams here to trigger the mechanism. So this is on purpose printed to be just slightly smaller than the axle it's gonna fit on here. So the plan is to heat it up slightly, that will soften the material a little bit, and then I hope I can just squeeze it down into place so it will fit tightly and not fall off. So it seems like a lot of people have a misconception about 3D printing. They seem to think it's like a Star Trek replicator and you just push a button and it will give you the part uh, you need. But really it's, it takes a lot, of, a lot of work to get something. You can see these were actually <laughs> all the parts I went through, all the different prototypes before I have something I'm pretty happy with. So um, going from a picture and some measurements onto what I think is gonna fit pretty much perfectly, uh, probably about four hours of work. Anyway, so I'm gonna use some hot air. I'll just set it to 100 degrees Celsius and hopefully that should help soften the 3D print and we can squeeze the gear on. I'm just gonna heat up the axle a little bit first here. And then the gear really carefully, not too much. A little bit more than that. And there's a piece of wood here. And there we have it. Now oh, it's looking good. So let's see if it's working. So if I turn it here and I press the Q button, it should engage here. Yes, it does. And it releases as well. So I think this is pretty good. Just one more quick note on 3D printing. So I printed this gear in PETG. It's a little bit more difficult to use than PLA, but it lasts a lot longer, it's a lot stronger, and it doesn't uh, absorb moisture like PLA does. Uh, PLA generally absorbs moisture and then it turns brittle and it will break apart in a few years, so it, it will not remain strong enough. So I hope PETG is going to be better, but other possible materials could be like nylon or ABS if you have some filament like that. So for other people with the same turntable and same problem with this gear missing, uh, I've included the download link to the uh, 3D printer file, uh, STL file for this model for this gear here. So hopefully that can be helpful for others. Anyway, let's try to get the plat on and see if it works now. Just need to switch on the power. And let's see if it will do auto return now. There. There we go. Perfect. And it switches off the turntable as well. Uh, let's try the reject button as well. I'll be playing a song in here somewhere. Click reject. Yep. It's looking good. And it switches off. Yeah, that looks like a successful repair. I don't know how long it's going to last, but um, if I keep the turntable myself, I can always just print a new gear. But if I pass it on to someone else, I will of course let them know that there's a gear in there that might fail, and if they need a new one, they can just let me know. Of course, I still think all the grease on the return mechanism needs to be cleaned off and replaced with some fresh grease or maybe just some, some oil, uh, because 45-year-old grease has probably turned hard, and it could have 
been the reason why the gear cracked in the first place, that it was getting too tough to drive the mechanism. But the first round here is just going to be a repair, and then we can look into restoration and servicing later. Uh, probably the spindle here needs some new oil as well. So last I want to have a look at the missing speed control switch over here. So I'll see if I can take this cover off. Uh, first I'll just take the platter off again. And according to the service manual it should be possible to just squeeze this one and pull up. Yeah, it's coming out. And there's a screw down there. And the whole thing comes out. And we can see the little neon bolt there. And looking at it here, so I can see there is actually a switch in here. But for some reason, it's higher than, it's higher up than the gap down here. So we're gonna need some kind of lever to operate this switch here. So we can see a picture here of what it's supposed to look like. So I don't think I can make it exactly like that, but I'm just gonna attempt another round of 3D printing and see if I can make something that's gonna work. Okay, so I came up with this little design here, but it's got a hole in the end here that should fit in over the switch like this. And we should be able to operate it. So let's see if this is working. Get the screw in there again. There we go. I'm not gonna put the cover on yet, but let me try put the platter back on and see if it actually works. Okay, I'll start it here. Yeah, it looks like it's spinning at the 45 now. It's a little bit unstable, I think. These parts are probably dirty. See, it jumps a little bit there. I don't know if you can see that from the neon bolt there. Maybe if I switch off the light here. I hope you can see it. Uh, it jumps a bit. I think the parts here are dirty, but I'll clean it later. And it could also be capacitors on the circuit board underneath. Let's try to switch it down to 33. Yep, that does the job. Well, that was fairly easy. So the lever here does not look quite as fancy as the original one, but Hey, it works. So I'll just put the cover back on. There we go. So I think that's enough for this video. Pretty much have a working turntable again. It of course still looks pretty rough. It needs a good clean. And I want to remove the old grease from the mechanism and put some new oil in and I think the main bearing here as well needs some new oil and the circuit board need to check all the capacitors probably replace all the electrolytic capacitors and I think the two parts here need a really good clean and I'll have to see what I can do about the cosmetic here and the plate on the bottom as well but anyway thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video uh, give a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe so I'll see you next time. Bye bye.